are back so sorry for that uh, i've never really had that happen before um but we're back hopefully everyone can find the uh the new show <laughs> no <laughs> one's in here yet so hopefully they'll find us soon uh but um uh, yeah i mean we're going to talk about the james cameron releases um the 4k physical releases here i'm waiting until a little bit more people show up okay stan better okay uh dc dc uh, dc sib d sibner <laughs> says are we back are we live we are live we are back uh let us know guys how the audio is uh hopefully that fixed it um yeah all right so uh what we were talking about really is two different things here is going on um and we and i think we both agree on on it uh first yeah everyone's judging the, the physical release based on what they saw on streaming or didn't even see, but saw through Reddit articles or Facebook group posts. Yeah. Um, and then as you brought out earlier in the, in the first try of this uh, live show, um, you brought out that, you know, uh, reviewers who get a disc early to, to review, they will go ahead and, and post it and people latch onto that and think, well, this is it. This is how, the, the the 4k right. looks or the blu-ray looks one thing with that is and i've seen that a lot lately and don't get me started on blu-ray.com uh, because uh, the past couple years i i don't even pay attention to blu-ray.com outside of release dates there yep. i had a couple of friends of mine well people i know that reviewed for blu-ray.com and they quit because they said the whole thing just completely changed and they started just hiring anybody who had a home theater system you had a home theater system you can review for us yep. instead of getting people to know what they're talking about uh so i'm also seeing on a lot of people read on reddit and physical media groups on facebook and social media where uh somebody will give the abyss aliens or just a random movie a bad review because of how it looks on their system and uh, and then they roll with it, like you said, they latch onto that, and they they roll with it, and they think, well, then it's garbage. I'm not going to to buy right. this this 4K. I keep trying to tell people, um, wait until I say I call them legit reviewers. Someone like Bill Hunt from the Digital Bits, um, uh, a DVD Beaver, um, a High Def. Uh, digest i think it's, it's called those are people that worked in the business they know what they're looking at they understand what they're looking at and they you can always rely especially on bill hunt that's my go-to guy he knows what he's talking about he's been reviewing for almost 30 years he right. knows his stuff those are the people you want to pay attention to you don't want to pay attention to you know joe schmo on on a reddit thread that says oh this looks like crap and then you find out he has a you know, 27 inch TV that he has motion smoothing on, you, you know, you don't know what these people are watching the, their product on. Um, Even then, I mean, many of them, yeah, they, they probably have the right setups and they're watching these on a decent 4k player on a decent TV. The harder part, they just plain don't know what they're talking about. They, a lot of these people, um, especially you and I have talked about this on, on DM a couple of times. So many people use the term DNR and don't yeah. even know what that actually means. Right. It's, it's baffling the way that I've read that in context over the last couple of weeks. They throw around this term DNR scrubbing, uh, yep. as, uh, and, and they don't know, like you said, they don't know what it means. In fact, I, I went so far as asking somebody, well, can you tell me what DNR means? And I never heard back from him. So that's your answer right not. there. Uh, I've asked people that said, well, the HDR makes the picture look so dark. And I said, well, do you know what HDR is used for? Do you know what <laughs> HDR even stands for? And they, right. no, no. And and so these are the people, not, I'm not saying everybody watching this, but these are people a lot of people are taking reviews from. It's people who don't even know what they're looking at or understand what they're looking at. Um, let's read some, some of the comments here. I see some comments coming in here. Uh, thick fix. Okay. Let's see here. Uh, disseminator. Is that his name? Um, Sibiner. Yes. Sibiner. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, let's see. He says it's the people spending, uh, spouting random tech numbers and posting color gamut charts. So sometimes, and again, 
they don't know what they're looking at. They 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 try to put yep. all this information to look like they know what they're talking about, but when it comes down to it, ask questions and they won't be able to answer it. Um, yeah, he says it's all nonsense. Then uh, let's see here. Reg Reg Re I Reggie think it's Reggie. Reggie nineteen. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry if I'm butchering your guys' names. Uh, thanks for joining <laughs> us, man. He says, hello, Paul and Ryan. Hey, man, thanks for joining us. Um, I know I'm going to butcher his name again. De <laughs> Deseminator, right? <laughs> Is that right? <laughs> Sibiner, exactly how Sibiner. it's spelled. Okay, Sibiner. I always want to say Sibiner. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they've already gone after Bill. Oh, it's ridiculous. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I, I'm... I, I don't know Bill personally, but I've got to know him online. We talk, we chat, and uh, yeah, we've gotten into it about some of these people that uh, basically say Bill is f full of crap, and right. people say I'm full of crap. I'm sure you've gotten it too with with what you've said, you, what you say. Uh, film Film Nut seventy nine says I only got the abyss and true lies so far. Aliens uh, should be in my hands on Friday, so I can't judge that. But I've only seen the abyss on disc, and it looks good. Yeah, and that's what I want to talk about a little bit later after we get through these comments here. Um, let's see, ahoy, gang! Silent mandible, uh, John Pimmel. Hey, John, thanks for joining us. John's a regular here. He says a takeaway I'm getting from the three reviewers, including Bill, is yes, the J James Cameron films are upgrades. But it's not for everyone. I suspect these titles won't be a reference disc for many, but we'll see. Um, yeah, I'll get into the, uh, more comments a little bit later, but, uh, let's, let's, let's go ahead and get into it. Um, so I went ahead and started pulling images for the, the, if you guys don't know, if you're watching me for the first time, I do 4k versus Blu-ray or 4k versus DVD comparisons. Uh, I take images natively from the disc. I don't just take a picture of my phone off, off the TV. <laughs> and then I put them side by side so you can get a true accurate representation of what the 4K looks like compared to what we had before. So I finished True Lies yesterday. I finished The Abyss actually before we started this. And there's a world of difference with The Abyss. Yeah. World of difference. First of all, I'm not going to get into everything because I want to save it for the review. But just to give people a little hint here. Uh, we always had a heavy purplish and heavy bluish tones with the Abyss. I remember on Laserdisc, DVD, VHS, the 4K goes to a more, I want to say, aqua or greenish uh, tones along with blue tones. And what this has done is it draws out so much more information in the image. It looks so much more natural and uh, and much more appropriate for the underwater environments. Um, and uh, and so I saw a world of difference when I compared it to the DVD. I mean, that was just, it's DVD is overly warm, overly saturated. It's got all these ugly purples and blues. When you right. put them side by side, it just looks like garbage. Um, yeah, and, and True Lies, I will say, is the weakest one of all three. Um, and I get into more why, uh, but let's, let, let me hear your thoughts on, on what you thought of, of the three films on 4k. I mean, I I'm at the point where I'm literally calling these good, better and best. And, uh, I, I think looking at these, it's really obvious. Um, all three are a leaps and bounds upgrade over what we've had from legal releases in the past whoops and uh even true lies which um by all means does have some uh over over digital uh over digital messing with um i i won't say digital noise reduction because it's more than that this is not just dnr that's plaguing this release they are using uh ai enhancements to to bring out some data which in fact has made us lose some data um, so yeah, true lies in, and the funny thing here, everybody's looking at this release as being botched the entire thing. It's mostly great. It's yeah. like a handful of scenes that are sort of off putting. And even then they're, there's, they're reaching that uncanny Valley. They're not in it. It is still a really, really great 4k release compared to the others. But, uh, when you're looking at this, it is 
it's better than anything we've ever had in the past. And honestly, when you're looking at that now, it it's easy to say, well, sure, but we, we should have had better. I mean, maybe, but also we, we don't know the behind the scenes process. We don't know the, the state of the elements. We don't know what happened. I, I know that you know some of it because you got friends. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not going to get into all of it because I'm going to save a big chunk of it for the true lies review, but yep. just very, very, very simply and basic. First of all, they went back to the original uh, Super 35 millimeter negative. It was damaged where the perfs were shrunk, which means that it was almost unusable due to decades of, of sitting in storage just basically rotting. Um, so that's number one. And they, they worked with, with what they had. Um, some people ask me, well, well, then why didn't they just use an interdepositive? I don't know. I can't answer that, but I do know that they wanted to strike it from the original camera negative, which is really the best yep. way to go. Um, second of late, secondly, um, they, uh, with the grain, there, the, the, he, my friend told me that the trail lights actually had a lot of soft focus and a lot of out of focus yep. shots through it. And the only way to combat that is by doing some push the sharpening a little bit more than they would have liked to and uh and using some of the techniques like some grain management um and the ai algorithms in order to get the video that's actually watchable because he actually told me that if they would have just left it and just would have run with it without any work done to it and just done a normal restoration work it looked like garbage it was almost unwatchable um and and so uh he told me that they actually put they did a comparison between what it would look like if they didn't do anything to it compared to what it would look like if they did showed it to jim and jim chose the lesser of two evils is what he said and he said you know what we got to do it this way and people aren't going to understand people are going to whine and bitch about it but it's otherwise it's not going to be watchable and people will be even more angry about what they actually got right. uh, if they didn't do this work. And that's one thing that a lot of people don't understand and it gets on my nerves. It's like, you don't know what it would have looked like if they didn't do this right. process. And the fact that the people who have years of experience restoring films say it was unwatchable, that kind of says something right there. Um, and then a lot of people are blaming uh, Peter Jackson's company, is it Park Road um, Studios? People are putting so much blame on that, which I think is is stupid. Yep. Um, first of all, it's not their decision; it's the director's decision of how he wants the film to look. Um, and uh, and you said uh, the you know what we had was the DVD, and I went ahead and bought this off Amazon. Shh, don't tell anyone. <laughs> The bootleg Spanish copy. And I compared this to the DVD. And this actually looks worse than the DVD. Because it's a bootleg. It looked like it, they just ripped it off a yep. torrent. And 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 slapped it on a, on a Blu-ray. Um, so yeah, I 100% I agree. They All three films, even True Lies, it's going to be... No matter how you slice it, it's going to look better than the analog NTSC non-anamorphic DVD that we had in yep. the past. No matter what, um, and I and and I agree. Like what you said, it's not through the whole movie. It's certain scenes or certain shots that look like that. It's not spread through the whole film. In fact, there's close-ups of. Let me try to pull up a, a picture here. Um, I'll go in and. and Tell us more of your feelings. Well, I uh, I actually just posted a comment in here because somebody did say um, that the pictures they've seen from this um, look like an AI cartoon. And the pictures that are going around about this are not an accurate representation of the majority of what this film looks like. They took, uh, they took action shots primarily of somebody moving. And so that's when the most noise reduction was used on some of those shots. The most AI enhancement was used. And for that reason, 
it's going to look extra egregious. But I mean, I wouldn't be surprised if those pictures were doctored anyways, in some way, because they, they don't look human. And even those shots, when you're watching it on a decent OLED 4k TV with a nice standalone 4k player, they don't look as bad as those pictures look. Um, true lies yeah. looks stupendous, better than I've ever seen it. Uh, better than I ever thought we'd see it on home video. Uh, does it leave a little bit to be desired? Sure. I, I won't argue with that. However, it's pretty damn great. Yeah, and when you look at the um, DVD, there's like no resolution on the DVD right. at all. And you get a lot of, here's a close-up of Arnie. How can, this is, I mean, people are saying the close-ups looks like garbage. I don't see how, I mean, the top picture is the 4K. The bottom is the DVD. So I don't see how this looks like garbage. I mean, it looks pretty similar to DVD, except it has more definition and uh, like you can see his uh, more clarity, but it doesn't look all smoothed out and waxy right. like people are saying. Um, and now people are saying, people are, are DMing me, messaging me saying, does True Lies look like Terminator 2? Did, in their words, Cameron fuck that up too? First of all, Cameron didn't F up Terminator 2. Studio Canal. It was the... Studio Canal did it. They used the 3D Master. Actually, the left side of the 3D Master. When And people don't realize, when, when 3D has to have a lot of smoothing done to it and even some color tweaks to make it look good in 3D. That's why it looks the way it does. Cameron didn't have anything to do with it. He didn't... They didn't come to him to approve it. They didn't come to him and say, hey, how do you want to do yep. this release? They did it themselves. And from what I'm hearing, Lightstorm is pissed over what they did, and they have been for a long time. Now that Cameron has the rights back to the franchise, I'm hearing that he's going to start working on the 4K Master for physical release. So I'm happy about that. No telling when it will happen. If it happens, it'll probably be next year. But um, So I'm hearing they're working on Terminator. Terminator 2, True La uh, Strange Days, and Solaris is what I'm hearing. Um, hold on here. So, yeah. I, 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 so we've talked about True Lies. I mean, what, what would you give True Lies as your rating between like a 1 and a 5? Just for the, the video quality of the, of the 4K? Yeah. Oh, probably like a 3.9. <laughs> See, and that's not bad at all. Yeah. Right? Um, and I, I gave it, spoilers, I gave the video quality a 3.5 out of 5, which I think is fair. Um, now, for the audio, though, talk about a huge yep. difference. That Atmos track is very aggressive. Um, what kind of system do you have that you listen to? Do you have I, I don't. I have two young kids, and uh, I, I've chosen to wait until they were old enough to not destroy them to uh, to get a, another <laughs> system. I sold my last one when we had our first kid, and so I've been waiting. Um, yeah, I, I'm still stuck with uh, rinky-dink nothingness, basically. No. Oh, not even 5.1? No, nope, or... I, uh, I, d I have... <laughs> Let's see how 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 deep should I go on somebody else's channel? Uh, I've got two special needs kids, um, where <laughs> okay. I, I've had like I've walked into our uh, living room and found my kid with a toy hammer banging the hell out of my windowsill. Oh. I don't want to have that happen to a subwoofer, so I'm waiting. <laughs> I'm uh, waiting a little yeah. bit longer. <laughs> yeah. That makes sense. <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, yeah, yeah. I mean, I I have an Amos set up, which is an out topic altogether. People think you can buy an Amos set up for two hundred bucks. Not a good It's one. not real Amos, first of all. Um, but anyways, uh, yeah. And I was absolutely blown yep. away by the audio quality of true lies. I mean, the aggressiveness, the, so the bass is very punchy, aggressive, uh, dialogue, music, everything is just really well balanced oh, yeah. and mixed together. Nothing ever overpowers the other. Um, so yeah, I mean, I gave the, the audio quality of five out of five. I mean, it, it's that's the winner on that disc for sure. Um, 
let me get into the comments here. I think some people were asking some questions here. I don't know. Did you see any that we missed here? Uh, one big one, Cursed Vault videos. Um, Is there any reason directors don't release both options, the digital restored, then the original film negative restoration as a special feature? That way we have both options. I mean, first off, that's not necessarily up to the director. That's the hard part. Um, they might be able to give insight onto the restoration and the color grade. They don't choose who has the rights for the cuts or the films or what they're allowed to release necessarily. Yeah, exactly. I mean, really, these studios, even some boutique studios, they bring they bring in a director just to approve the color grading, really, and to make sure it's to their standards. Sometimes they'll bring in the director, like um, on After Hours, to March Scorsese. He actually came in and supervised the restoration on um, what was what was the other one that Criterion released? Um, his name escapes me. Um, his first film. Or not his first film, but Harvey Keitel. Are you talking about Mean Streets? Uh, mean Streets, yeah. Yeah, Mean Streets. So they actually brought him in, and he brought his own print to work the, the, off the color grading off of his own, own personal print. And so sometimes that happens if a director really wants to work hand-in-hand -hand with the studios to, to give a, a good uh, a restoration work. But generally, typically, it's the director has nothing to do with it has nothing to do with it and sometimes like in glorious bastards i don't know your thoughts on that but that the universal really dropped the ball on yep. that one um and tarantino he's like i had nothing to do with it it wasn't my decision <laughs> and he and they own the rights they own the movie so he can't right. go you know he can't do anything about it um so yeah so yeah the directors really don't have a say um that's how studio canal did what they did with yep. Terminator 2. um one thing i want to point out here someone left a comment uh last movie standing says we also don't know the state of the original camera negatives post-processing is sometimes uh if not is sometimes needed i guess if not most times necess uh much needed times if not most <laughs> times needed uh yeah i mean um I, I actually got a couple comments before i started the show by people already ragging on james cameron and true lies and saying that you know, he effed it up and Park Road, I guess. Is that the name of the studio? Park I Road? don't even remember. Uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, screwed it up. One person even said, uh, it's crap. Just put it's crap. That's it. And, I, and I, I'm like, you know, you don't even have the disc, first of all. I guarantee you these people don't even have the disc. They haven't even seen it for themselves. And they're, like we said at the top of this video, they're just going on what they're seeing on Reddit or groups. Um, and, and that's true. We nobody knows what the original negatives quality looks like what how damn would you have ever thought that true lies was so damaged that it would have been unwatchable i didn't think that no and, but that, that also depends on who is deeming it unwatchable and what he determines is unwatchable cameron's fickle and he's he's very much uh he's somebody that's always had an affinity for technology and wanting things to look modern so his unwatchable might be very different than what any of us would have called unwatchable that's true <laughs> that's true that's true i mean he is he's a perfectionist as well um now i was talking to a, a, about the ai use i was actually talking to a producer friend of mine last a couple nights ago and he mentioned said that i don't know why everyone is freaking out about the use of deep ai algorithms because we've been using them for about 20 years yep. now with rest and most companies are using public them. it's just not public right. knowledge this became public knowledge so that's why everybody's flipping out about it it's not unusual um let's see here let's try to go through here the grammy reaper says true lights looks like an ai cartoon from pictures i've seen uh, again you're looking at pictures i've seen pictures where people are just taking off their tv first of all if you're using your phone to take off tv your phone colors are completely different than what your tv shows um and i think i personally think that people like as you said are manipulating photos to make it look worse than it actually looks just to troll people they're just trolling people um, so like I said, don't judge it on what you see on groups. Um, Hey, Joshua, thanks for joining us, man. Good to have you here. Um, 
Stan says, I'll just watch my old VHS tapes. <laughs> <laughs> well, you have fun with that then. <laughs> I don't know if he's joking or not. He's definitely he's joking. joking. <laughs> but, okay. Because I seriously have people say that to me in yeah. comments. I'm just going to stick to my VHS tape. It's it's fine. And I know they're saying it to kind of poke the bear. They wanted me to retaliate against that. And I just say, okay, have fun with that. I don't care what you do. I'm just telling you like it is. Uh, let's see here. I think. Yeah, so here's someone that thinks Park Road dropped the ball. Pew, Pew Burrito says Park Road dropped the ball on the... Uh, Beatles Restoration and Lord of the Rings Blu-ray has more visual detail than the 4K at UHD upscale. I thought that the Lord of the Rings uh, 4Ks looked good. They do. I didn't have a problem with that. I yeah, I had no problem with that. Um, all of a sudden, people are picking on this poor st uh, studio. Um, well, Rico... True Lies Laserdisc looked just like at the theater, and so did Aliens Laserdisc. I don't know how old you are, but I don't know about you, Ryan, but I can't remember what a movie looks like that I saw in the theater 30 years ago. I can't ago. remember a movie what it looked like that I saw in the theater last year, so. <laughs> right. <laughs> so when people say stuff like that, I mean, I don't buy it because... How are you going to right. know for sure? I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, I saw a movie last week, and if it came out on Blu-ray a couple weeks from now, I wouldn't know. Uh, it's like, you know, so if you're going on what people saying, uh, I don't know. Well, again, in the, uh, the screen gotta... caps and the pictures, unless you took them, they can't be trusted. I, that's the biggest thing. Yeah. Well, I've noticed, too, that I... I I was excited about aliens because there's the scene on um, on what is it LV24 in the beginning um, with on the director's cut. There's a scene where the truck drives away and it has a shot from the ground up, and there's lava tracks yeah. in the ground. I never noticed that before, and and now you notice it. Um, but I took a picture of when the salvage team came in to the ship and the blue laser that goes searching for the probe. Um, I took a picture of it. And when I took a picture of it, it looked really overblown with blue. And so I sent it to somebody and I said, okay, it doesn't look this blue, but still you can see the benefits of it. So that's the thing too, is that if you are look, t looking at what people are taking pictures off their, their TV, it's not going to be accurate. It's true. Um, Let's see here. I'm trying to find some some questions here. Let's see here. There's uh, oh, I think you already read this one. Yeah, you already read that one. Uh, let's see. John Pimmel says, "I'm curious if Aliens or Abyss has a quality similar to Star Wars 4K and how they have had some cleanup." With that said, the Star Wars original trilogy 4K discs look great, look nice, not incredible, but I like it. Um, what's your thought on that? Uh. Honestly, I, I think these look uh, much, much better than the Star Wars 4Ks. Um, the Star Wars 4Ks are barely good. Um, th those honestly weren't that big of an upgrade, in my opinion. Yeah, I, I agree with that. It, they look, I mean, it was an upgrade, but it wasn't like right. mind blowing. Uh, like, it didn't knock my Well, and out. I may be misremembering. I don't think any of those had uh, Dolby Vision either, which means there was, that's. I think it's just. I think that's half of the benefit gone right there. Yeah, I think it's just it was just HDR10. Um, see here. Uh, last movie standing says True Lies has a great new 43 minute special features about the behind the scenes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I haven't checked out the special features yet. I need to check that out. Uh, let's see here. I think that's about all the questions. Yeah. So. Obviously, without continually repeating right. ourselves and, and going on and on about it, we like the we we like the 4Ks of James Cameron. He did not screw up his movies. Why would a director want to purposely screw up his movie? That's my question. He didn't. The studio, the restoration company, didn't. They worked on what James Cameron wanted. That's it. They they were only doing their job. Um, 
And yeah, so I will be release dropping the comparisons of true lies and the abyss first i think i'm gonna drop it on the same day it's probably gonna be closer to the end of the week and then i'm gonna work on aliens so yeah if you're new here uh subscribe so you can be notified when that when those videos drop because i'm telling you it's it's a huge difference there just the fact it's not animal just the fact it's anamorphic makes right. <laughs> it makes all the difference in the world um yeah uh let's see here uh, Jeremy Gilly says, has Starship Troopers gone a Dolby 4K yet? Yes, with a Steelbook. Classic uh, Sony re-release. The... Yeah, when they, they've been re-releasing their 4Ks in Steelbook, that includes Dolby Vision. So, yeah. Um, let's see here. Joe says, the Alien LaserDisc was a problem to the point uh, that Cameron uh, mansplained the concept of film green for months. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, some of that stuff too, like like I brought out Lingorious Bastards, Universal uh, did a ton of grain management on that and didn't even consult uh, Tarantino about it. So a lot of times it's out of the director's yep. hands. Um, yeah, so Danny says, I watched True Lies, Abyss, and Aliens in the theater. Can't remember the quality, but I enjoyed all three. Great memories. Yeah, absolutely. Um, actually, True Lies was... My twin brother Simon. It was our first R-rated movie in the theater. Was nice. True Lies, and uh, so we were how old were we? We were sixteen when that came out. Um, so we snuck in because eighteen needs a company by adults. <laughs> <laughs> theater hopping. Uh, yeah. So you approve, uh, Ryan? I approve? I wholeheartedly approve. Again, I I will say good better best by far um i mentioned 3.9 for true lies uh just for you know continuity's sake um for me aliens is probably about a 4.2 4.3 an abyss is probably about a 4.6 4.7 somewhere around there yeah yeah i was really impressed with with the abyss um uh I'm going to bring out this to Pew Burrito says, I think the new transfer theatrical cut of the abyss is airing on Showtime now. I don't know. I mean, it could be, but I don't know. But I will say this. Don't watch the theatrical cut. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know people that only watch the theatrical cut and they don't like the movie. And I plead with them, plead with them. Watch the director's right. cut. Give it a chance. Almost, what, 30, 40 minutes of of extra footage and it's not just needless it actually it, it it moves the story you have more depth to characters character development it explains why the aliens are there in the first place um so yeah i mean fox butchered uh the film when they when they release it theatrically um but yeah director's cut is really the only way to watch the abyss fully agreed um yeah so uh Tell us, are you able to tell us any new um, prospects you're working on of TerraVision? Um, all I can say uh, publicly is their um, last uh, August, they did a live stream where they announced literally like 26 titles. They, they, they announced things way earlier than they should have because people have been complaining since then every month. Hey, are you guys putting this out yet? No, not yet. Um, but uh, they are all still coming. Uh, most of them will be out by the end of this year. And we're talking fairly heavy hitter titles uh, like Gator Bait and the sequel Gator Bait 2, um, Nailgun oh, nice. Massacre and Papatopoulos and uh, City of Violent Children, I think is the name of that one, or Violent Rome. I, I always get that one confused. Um, we're looking at uh, Black Cobra, I believe, 1 and 2. Um, God, there's there's so many. Uh, a handful of the City of Lights titles will be out before the end of this year. There's a lot. Wow. Now, were you involved in the uh, Dante's Inferno? I helped a little bit with the booklet. Okay. What I was curious, to, what I was curious, and I, I've been trying to get uh, Brad, Brad yep. Henderson, on the show, and I've, I've talked to him sometimes, I've talked to him periodically, and, and uh, so we're trying to work that out. But, um, you know, it, it includes four different versions yep. of the film, the red tent, green tent, black and white. So, Mike, my question is, and what I keep having people ask me is, which is the preferred version of how it was released? 
Uh, you know? Well, that, I mean, honestly, that depends on you. They, they were shown in different ways all over the world. So based on that, there is no real preferred version because some people, m most people only ever saw one version. So it's up to you to watch and make the decision of what do you prefer? Because honestly, the biggest thing is they, when you watch the four different cuts it, or not cuts, but the four different grades, it gives like a different vibe. Like when you watch the red tit one, it feels like it's already a sinister movie and it feels more sinister. It feels more haunting when you watch that red tin version. So yeah, it, it absolutely just, uh, you, you should change it based on, uh, what you check out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That's interesting. I haven't checked it out yet. I can't wait to dive into it. Um, I mean, that, that movie is 1911. I believe yep. when that movie was released. I mean, what, 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 what was it a monumental undertaking to get that, that restored because i believe it was restored in 4k it was a 4k restoration by Red redwood creek films uh originally that was a kickstarter two and a half or so years ago they did that and then they licensed their restoration to terrorvision who also did more restoration work and so uh after all of that that that's how we're ending up with four different versions of this movie <laughs> that's awesome yeah and it, it amazes me these preserving film which you can't say for major studios anymore they, they just don't seem to care. Um, news just in from Pew Burrito. Guys, and Intel on 7. Drew McKinney stirring up trouble saying uh, Fincher is using AI on it. Well, then again, like we said earlier, they use AI, AI algorithms all the time. And now because of Cameron, it's become public. And now everybody is going to say, this restoration work is using AI. Screw this restoration. Yeah. When before, if it wasn't made public, you wouldn't even have known. You would have never known. So make like you don't know. <laughs> uh, but I, uh, Seven, Cameron has fin. I mean Cameron, Fincher has finished uh, the restoration to Seven. He's approved it. It's going to be out, I believe, in the UK in April, and then here domestically in May. And uh, I can't wait to to, to see that. Um, Warner Brothers did the restoration work, so. I don't know. They've been doing pretty good lately with the restoration work. I really haven't had any issues with it. Um, so hopefully I'll be a good, a good one. Um, see hopefully here. now we get the, the better Fincher movies in 4k. Well, I want, I mean, they, they announced panic room years ago, like a year ago, more than that. It's been about three ago. years. Yeah. Yeah. And, and from what I heard Fincher didn't, didn't like, didn't, didn't approve of the of the work and so they've gone back to the drawing board um yeah like simon says ai isn't a bad thing it's a tool to use yeah i think now with studios especially with um you know hollywood wanting to use ai for everything you know what we went through with the strikes where they w wanted to use ai to replace background characters and all this stuff i think ai has become a really bad word now to the film community when it's always been used and it's you if it's used properly and used as a tool like it should there's not a problem yep. with it but uh as we know studios are looking at it just to save money though right now um yeah uh let's see here they literally have to redo outdoor shots through windows for seven because hdr took out the blown out whites Took out the blown whites. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. But if they if they if they fixed it, that's good because I know they were really blown out on the Blu-ray. So hopefully they hopefully they fix it. Simon says hopefully we will see Fight Club. I don't think so. Disney owns well, that now. Based on how it was filmed, I don't know that that's truly possible. Was it filmed? Is it, I, I think filmed? that one was just a 2K. Yeah, it was 2K. So, yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure. I haven't really looked into it. Um, but also the fact that, I mean, Fox disowned that right. movie when it came out. <laughs> and Disney, I know the person that actually greenlit Fight Club was fired for greenlighting that movie. Uh, yeah, they're, they're not going to, I don't see Fight Club ever coming to a 4K. Uh, but, I mean, never say never, but I don't see it. Uh, P. Burrito says, uh, anticipating Manhunter. 
announced and canceled and Dark City would be great. My, yeah, Manhunter um, is now the one that they did announce, but it hasn't uh, been come out yet. Um, just a second here. Got to... Sorry. So, um, tell us about um, what new releases are you looking forward to? This oh time? man, uh, all kinds of stuff. Uh, if anybody's paying attention um, on the, you know, the 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 dark web of physical media today, there's all kinds of Warner leaks that came out today. Um, uh, basically, the fact that we are likely getting uh finally some 4ks that have been rumored for the last couple of years i'm definitely looking forward to most of those especially another kubrick uh so far those have all looked incredible um big thing uh the first um first classic pta in 4k eager for that one uh th there's all kinds of stuff that i'm i'm working on the discs right now and I, i'm eager for those to come out um uh like i said i, I have my own production company and there's stuff um i i recorded extras for some releases last july that oh, haven't nice. been announced and some of the companies that we did stuff for last july and august they've got stuff already scheduled all the way out through july so i don't see them announcing stuff for the next couple months probably which means it's probably not going to come out till a year after i did the extras so eager to see whatever wow. happens with some of those it's, I, I believe i mean that's usually the case right uh it depends a on the year. company um some of the companies like uh uh, Frank Jang is a friend of mine and he's told, he's told me some stories like, uh, Eureka in the UK will come to him and say, Hey, can you do an audio commentary for this random Hong Kong title? We just acquired, we're announcing this in four weeks and it goes to production two weeks later. <laughs> we need it in two weeks from right now. So it, oh, it really wow. depends on the company and, <laughs> and how they're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I, and I, I know some people, I've known people that uh, shot special features for movies, and they never they never see the light of day. They end up not being on the yep. release uh, for one reason or another. So, but um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I'm, I know, like you said, Warner Brothers is, and it, uh, Warner Brothers actually put out that tweet, what do you yeah. want to see? A poll. I mean, everybody's clamoring for Nightmare on Elm Street. Um I don't know if they'll do... Do you think they'll do the whole series in 4K or just I, the first one? Because I know the first one has a 4K scan. It does. And the, the 4K restoration looks great. I saw that in a the theater. Uh, this October will be three years ago. So uh, I, I kind of doubt they're going to be able to do the whole series, at least for this year. Uh, I think eventually they might, because it will make them just truckfuls of money if they ever do that. Yeah. But at the same time... It's, it's also a lot of work, and 4K restorations are very expensive, especially to invest in a franchise to do 4K restorations. Uh, one good 4K restoration generally is somewhere between fifty dollars and $75,000 on the, the low end. So to, to have a studio do eight of them all together, that's a lot of money to invest. Yeah. Yeah, I always heard to have a good restoration to do it good is about a hundred to one hundred twenty-five thousand, and that's just one movie, guys. And there's what seven or six yeah. Freddy movies, so that's a ton of money. Um, yeah, and so uh, I'm, I heard that Dirty Harry will be getting will be coming out. Um, and some other, which all these Warner Brothers titles that we wanted. They should have brought out with a hundred year yep. anniversary last year. You know, they really dropped the ball. Well, on even the releases we um, got for the hundred year, they dropped the ball on a lot of those too. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very, very skimming on their uh, release slate for the for last year. I'll say <laughs> that. It was, um, yes. Let's see here. Uh, last movie standing says I'm waiting for Lake Placid to hopefully come to 4K. Hey. Never Seems know. Stranger Things. There, there's Uwe Boll films coming out on 4K now. Yeah, the uh, uh, Postal. Is that, yep, that, that, that and Blood Rain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, let's see here. Simon says he can't wait for The Crow. Um, yeah, I'm. I'm. Uh, the only problem is because uh, Alex Proyas did not approve the transfer, so I don't. I mean, I'm sure it's going to look good, way better than the DVD right. that we had. But still, I don't know. Hopefully, it's 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 a great transfer. 
Um, yeah. DC says, get ready for the Warner <laughs> Brothers 101 anniversary editions. <laughs> exactly. The gold. It will have the gold 101. <laughs> 101. Um, yeah. I mean, I think I think we're, we're, we're going to wrap it up. I've been dragging all day, so I'm kind of spaced out right now. If you guys can't tell, I'm kind of searching for words. <laughs> what to say. I've had better streams. Um, <laughs> I've been up since... I didn't get to bed till like 5.30, and I've been up since like 10.30, so... Yeah, I'm I'm about had I'm about ready to fall down now. Um, let's see, let's see a couple more comments here. It says, "Hopefully, Sony Columbia will fare better this year with their hundredth anniversary." Well, actually, that brings a good question to you, For somebody that actually works in the business. What's your thoughts on the Disney Sony merger? Uh, what is the best way to say this? <laughs> um, I first off, I get why the Disney 4Ks have sucked so much now that we've gotten some information about how that's worked behind the scenes. Uh, completely makes sense. Completely understandable. It's dumb, and this is why corporations ruin a lot of good things for the rest of us. Uh, so when it comes to the Sony taking over, I'm cautiously optimistic that uh, a couple things. I think if Disney sees hey, people can be happy with our discs and we can actually make money off of these finally. Maybe they'll turn this into overdrive and over the next couple of years, they'll ramp it up to 11. Or the other end, we'll just keep getting the same nothing and when they put out a new disc, it'll just be through Sony. And honestly, yeah. either way, it's better than it was six months ago. So uh, oh, a yeah. any disc coming out through Sony is going to look better than a Disney disc. And I... I can't complain. Um, I, I'm hoping for the the prior situation where maybe they'll they'll wise up and we'll get every title we've been dreaming for for years. But it's it's Disney. I mean, they they invented the vault. I'm doubting that we're going to get uh, yeah. a deluge of titles. Yeah, I, I, uh, John Thompson, a, a producer. He's a producer and and executive. Um, and I, I'm friends with him. And we we're talking about this, and and he said that he was actually part of the deal, and it was going on. It started about three years ago, talking uh, Bob Iger, talking to Sony about about this, um, and he was saying that Disney, you know, they they their whole focus was 100 percent on D Disney Plus. That's all they wanted. They didn't want home media. Disney Plus is what it yep. was, or physical media. Disney Plus is what it was. And uh, and so what did they do? They let go of all the good people there that knew what they were doing and understood the format. And all we've had is crap since. Bob Iger um, realized that he shot himself in the foot with this, according to the producer friend of mine. And, uh, and he realizes there's money to be made now. However, they don't have any yep. people. He has no good people there. So... Sony, you know, I think Sony is the best major studio putting out business by a long right shot. Now. Their stuff is immaculate. I mean, and they they put in they do great great work. Um, so I think Sony this merger is good, um, and Sony's going to do a good job. The only thing is, is what titles are they going to license out to Sony? You know. Are we going to get the 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea? Are we going to get, you know, these classic Disney films or not? And then Fox movies, Fox titles, these classic, classic Fox titles like Planet of the Apes. Um, you know, just these wealth of Fox titles. Are Is Disney going to allow Sony to, to work right. on those? Um, so that's all up in the air right now. I think they will, maybe not right away. But I think they will when they start seeing that, hey, people are actually buying these. Um, I can also see with those Columbia House, those Colum I said Columbia House, remember that? <laughs> oh, Columbia yeah. Columbia House record deal. <laughs> uh, the Columbia box sets, volume one through two, three, four. I think that Sony may do that with like doing a bundle box set deal of Disney. Yeah. Can never go wrong with that, with those. Uh, I think Sony's going to probably do a box set like that for Disney movies. It seems seems like they may may go that. If route. Disney would let them, I, I think that that would be uh, first off one of the best selling items that Disney's done for physical media in the last fifteen years. But second off, um, I, I think that one of those being released would change their minds on physical media immediately. Oh, a hundred percent, hundred percent. 
And then yeah, don't get me started uh, if they did that for like a touchstone box set or an Amblin oh, box set shoot. or any of those other random production companies that falls under Fox. It would explode in popularity. Well, how, I don't know about you, but I hear it every day. Where's the yep. rock? Rock 4K. We need the rock on 4K. Con Air, yep. pretty, pretty woman. Uh, I had somebody tell me the other day, uh, 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 Good Morning Vietnam. So many great titles yep. that that desperately need to be preserved and and salvaged on on physical media. Well, and we, um, we're we're also just talking about classic films. There's still a t litany of brand new movies that are not going out yeah. that absolutely need it as well. That's true. That's true. I was surprised. I was blown away when Disney uh, released the Star Wars and and Marvel shows. On four, on physical There's money media. to be made. I was, I was shocked, and that shows right there. Bob Iger knows yep. there's money there to be made. Um, see, DC says, but Ryan, what about that glorious Disney hundred box set set from a year ago with that class crystal Mickey Mouse ears? <laughs> that was what a thousand dollars. No, fifteen hundred. <laughs> fifteen hundred. That was insane, and they're not. They were, and I just heard that they just they were just like poured it over from an old, old uh, no it's literally the exact games. same discs from all of the other releases just together yeah oh really <laughs> that was ridiculous uh movie collector says i need tombstone yeah that's been rumored for years coming on 4k um magnolia on 4k for sure uh dick tracy that would be cool in 4k especially with all the vibrant colors comic book colors it has um yeah so I think, we're, yeah, it's been great. I mean, I think we're going to end the show now. i got to wrap this up. I'm going to go to bed early. <laughs> uh, thanks so much for joining me, Happily. Ryan. Uh, we need to do this again when I'm more awake. Please. More, <laughs> have more to say. Uh, so we'll invite you on again for sure. Uh, thanks so much for everyone for joining us tonight. Uh, it means a lot. And, uh, and yeah, if you guys haven't, um, you know, follow me. Give, give me a follow because, like I said, I do these Blu-ray versus uh, 4k and 4k versus dvd comparisons uh you can check it out on my channel i got a playlist and uh, i've also done interviews with filmmakers like i did an interview with alex proyas where he talked a lot about the crow and uh and dark city so yeah i got i got a lot of good stuff on the channel if you guys want to check it out if not that's okay. <laughs> all right guys uh thanks so much for joining us thanks ryan for coming aboard Happily. uh we'll do this again for sure and uh Guys, remember, keep physical media alive. We'll see you.